that's fine. Okay, because um, um, again, well, let me start off with this is Frank Alio, F.A. It is Thursday, 7-22-2021. It is 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm here with Ernest Collins and April Wright. And um, we're going to go ahead and get into helping them meet their goals and meet their challenges. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Right. Ah, come on. This is not working. It's supposed to work. Come on. I'm sharing my screen, but I'm not being real successful at moving it up and down. Why? I don't know. I do it every day. Um, hmm. Why is it not up there? You know, that's why. Okay. Let's down arrow, not working. Embarrassing. Okay, let me try all over again. Let me share my screen. Let me, um, very embarrassing. All right, well, I can do it without the screen. I really wanted to have the screen up there, but I can't seem to make it work. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't like to make excuses for <clears throat> technology, but every now and then uh, mm, right. Skype changes little things. And when that happens, it causes major, major problems. We I'm going to give it one more shot. And if it don't work, then I'm going to just wing it. OK. That's where I want it to be. And this is what I wanted to show you. And this is the screen. Okay. <clears throat> Are we seeing my screen yet? Yes. Yes. All right. And as soon as I do that, ah, okay. Good, 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 good. Let's see if it's still going to cooperate. Ah, great. Okay. So we've been in business, me personally, I've been in business 36 plus, plus, plus years. I retired over six years ago. I can't, I don't keep count anymore. And um, I was with the, uh, the banking industry. I called them banksters. And um, even though I was one of the banksters, uh, that's a play on words for gangsters, um, I left them and I decided to go on the other side of the fence and that is private money. And I've been working with private money now for about 15 or so years and I got pretty good at it. I associate myself with a number of different companies so I don't have to count out any one company. If any one company gets out of uh, line, I could just leave them and go to another company. I have overlapping services, so I can cover practically any application, practically any situation. Now, and with 36 plus years of experience, you do pick up friends, a bunch of friends along the way. So I have a lot of connections to get um, practically any situation that you can run into, I can get them funded for you in one way or the other. So that's enough about me. And, um, and what we normally do is we normally pre-qualify people and we get them uh, the funding that they need. So we talk, you talked about having um, earnest an existing business. Do you have working capital in that existing business? We have just about uh, enough to, uh, well, I would say yes. <laughs> um, we, we have we have some. Okay. So what I usually do with existing businesses and even startups, so it, it is what I'm about to say, qualifies both for existing and for startup businesses. But what we like to do is we like to get you pre-qualified before you get into the real estate situation. We like to have you pre-qualified so that you have plenty of money on hand 
to use as a working capital. What we do is if, if what we, let me see if I can, I'm going to try to open up that screen again. I hope, and I'm going to push it on the other side so it doesn't interrupt me. Let me just see so I can see you guys. There you go. Now I can see you guys. Now let's see if I can still use my screen. Ah, that was the problem. The, the pictures were, were hiding the controls. That was the problem. Okay, so, so what we like to do is we like to get you guys started off with plenty of working capital. What we do is we set people up with anywhere between fifty to $150,000 worth of unsecured business working capital. You can use this money to do anything, to run your advertisements, to pay bills, to uh, put down payments on property, to uh, pay for gasoline in your automobiles, and anything else that would come up. It's business, it's unsecured, so it's not secured by anything. It's business, so it can be used for any legal, legitimate business uh, reason and unsecured, meaning it's not secured by anything except your signature. So um, if for any reason you don't pay it back, I really have no recourse to come back to get anything from you. The only thing I can do is hurt your credit. And I don't, that's the last thing in the world I want to do, because like you guys said, we have tremendous amount of repeat business because People keep coming back and like happened to you, a friend of a friend of a friend, as somebody that we've worked with in the past, recommended you. That's that's how we get most of our business. You won't see a gigantic uh, Facebook advertisement, although I do have a Facebook page. You won't see a gigantic website, although we do have a small website. You won't see all of this, and the reason is because we don't need it. We've been working and doing this for so long. People know who we are. And we have 762 agents nationwide, but who's counting? So, and that's how come we don't really need a gigantic um, uh, presence. So what we'd like to do is like to talk to you about what you would need in order to get pre-qualified. So um, Ernest, if I gave you $75,000, could you use that to run your existing business right now? I don't think so. That's just, no, uh, yes, I could. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like a comedian. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Because on average, that's what I average. Most of my people will get $75,000. And it is, let's face it, it's based on your personal credit first, but it never shows on your personal credit. It only shows on your business credit. Now, we do have a number of different programs that we can use to get you the funds for you to run your business efficiently. Now, the second thing you we heard, well, and, and what do we need? We not need to know what type of business you have. Well, we know you do event and you do in, indoor and outdoor events, and you look in at some point in time to, I'm guessing, buy that building to uh, do the indoor events in. Do you have a building in mind to purchase right now? Yes, uh, yes. Actually, this is a good, great situation for us uh, because the building that we're trying to acquire is fully furnished, so we don't have to put a lot of capital in to furniture, uh, Dishware, kitchenware, um, things of that nature. So, um, this is a this is a great opportunity to uh, start up. So you said kitchenwares. So you do also you do um, catering as well with this event. We will be um, expanding. Yeah. So we have with the event center that we are in now, which is outside. We do no uh, um, uh, food and beverage. Okay. Uh, we may do a little beverage, um, meaning that, you know, when you have a hotel, you could do a little alcohol um, without, you know, running, you know, into situations with the county. 
Um, but with this situation, we would have to acquire a liquor license. So, so we have the ability to do that plus cater um, and in-house uh, foods for events. So when we're, we're talking about what we're needing and what we're doing, we're expanding what we, we already have. Okay. And so that, that's a fantastic answer, by the way. Um, so how much funding will you need? How much funding will help you? Um, we are like, when we, I think we put out the application. April, you, you have that in front of you? I don't, but we put. Um, yes, Frank, they put in put the application. And they exactly. asked for 250000 um, the minimum of 100000 the building, they're doing a lease option on it. Okay, good. So, so the lease option that's with the landlord, is that correct? Yeah. With the current yes. landlord. Okay. And, um, all right, well, we have ways. So, so when, okay, you're doing a lease option now, at what point in time would you decide to exercise your option? The lease, the, the offer that he, the owner currently offered us is based on us leasing and buying in a year. So we would lease for one year um, with the expectation of us purchasing the building after that first year of leasing. And he's also given us an extension if we, if we happen to go over that year, um, if he sees that we are serious contenders for buying the building, he would extend it. Okay. All right. And so how will you get the funds for the actual purchase of it? Based on the business, um, we have, based on the business that Ernest already has, like I said, this will be an expansion. So we're pretty confident that once we get our foot in the door, we will be able to purchase that building in a year, just based on the clientele that we currently have. The business itself will pay for the, bit, the building. Um, that is the expectation that we're um, confident in being able to accomplish. Mike, but I, I do want to add, we do need, um, I guess, a plan B in case we can't cover the whole cost of the building because that is, that's, that's the contingency with um, going into the lease with this owner. He wants to see that we actually can do that. So I don't know if we need a letter of intent or some uh, good faith uh, documentation that's showing him that we are good, uh, we're, we're uh, good contenders for uh, the, the actual property we're trying to acquire. Well, the good news here is that uh, that's where I was going with this line of questioning: is we do offer funding. So if you've been in the if you've been in the business in the building and ha operating your business in the building for a year. If you know anything about credit, the lease counts for absolutely zero. However, I have a program that we can put you on with the landlord's permission, and we can make those lease payments that show up zero on your credit report, we can make those lease payments look like a mortgage payment. Now, if you go to, in a year from now, and you apply for a mortgage based on um, rental for a year, you really don't gain anything from it. But if you go for a mortgage a year from now and it shows that you've got 12 mortgage payments, all of a sudden you qualify where you may not have qualified before. And um, if the business is doing well and you need 50% of the money if to, to fund the building, we can do that. If you need 60% of the money to fund the building, we can do that. And we can probably go all, all the way up to 75, 80, maybe even 90% if you need that. But it sounds to me like you're not going to need it. It sounds to me like you're pretty confident about your business. Is that correct? Well, we're confident, but I would uh, just backtrack this a little. Okay. <laughs> Always well, good to use other resources instead of just exhausting out our funds that's, that's yeah right. so we, we would definitely entertain um the you know if we if we needed 60 percent of a loan to purchase we would definitely entertain that well there you go 
So what we would do is we'd put you on that program right away so that um, so that when it's time, you will have a, a solid plan B because everybody in business, business 101 is use OPM. Don't don't gamble with your money. Don't gamble with your money. Gamble with other people's money. And that's what, uh, you know, that's OPM. And of course, uh, we can have a long-term relationship with you helping you along the way and giving you funds along the way when some unexpected thing comes up when that dishwasher breaks down and you need a new dishwasher or you need a new gas stove put in or you need like me a new refrigerator that that you need a new refrigeration system we can help you along the way with leasing the equipment so again it doesn't come out of pocket when you have something like that we we have We've built a long relationship with you so that you can use us as a one-stop shop to have all of your financial needs met and help you um, achieve your goals. So what is your revenue like now? Um, since the pandemic, um, we, we started back up in April and we have been doing events. They've, they've been shadow events um because I, I guess the the people are getting used to coming out again um so in, uh, in north carolina they busted out <laughs> yeah so in the in, in the in the club industry they, they have they have bust, busted out and we've actually been seeing uh, incredible increasing numbers uh, however the venue that we occupy living in florida it's the rainy season. So we have to do a lot of cancellations. Uh, I have a ton of clients that are looking for events, but I can't offer them uh, events on the inside because I have no place. So, and this is a venue that, ho the, the outside venue that we ho hold now is, uh, it's, it seats about maybe 600 to a thousand people. So it's a pretty big, big courtyard event center but it does me no good because it's always raining in Florida. So uh, my numbers probably fluctuate between five to ten thousand dollars a month. Okay, that's kind of where I was going. Um, I was hoping that you'd say twenty thousand, but okay, um, <laughs> but five to ten thousand dollars currently. But of course, if we if you improve your situation, it's going to improve your. Revenues. Oh, We're looking at about a hundred thousand dollars that we we would have in, in months, um, according to our calculations of what we're getting, and by all the can cancellations that we've had, and plus uh, new clients that are contacting me now, I'm I'm more than sure that we could reach those numbers. Okay, so now if we could get you the whole 200,000 that you're asking for, it might have to come from multiple sources. Would that have any effect on you or would that be okay with you? No, we, we just would have to have some type of documentation to show the landlord that we are serious contenders, serious buyers. Um, okay. And that's it. We, 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 we're sure once we get in the building that we, we would, uh, being, being that this is an expansion, we're not a startup. Uh, we would have business right away. Okay. And then when we get you that money, how will that affect your business? How will that help you? Well, uh, we, we did a, a tour, a walkthrough, and there are certain things that we need uh, in terms of, you know, the appeal, aesthetics, uh, but they're not much. With the place is fully furnished. We would utilize most of the money on marketing and advertising and uh, uh, hiring uh, wait staff and uh, basically, that's that's that would would cover uh, the main things that we would need to be successful uh, on a month-to-month -month basis. Okay. So that advertising and market budget budget would need to be uh, pretty extensive. Um, but however, I do have I already have business, but we it wouldn't hurt to to advertise in some places that. Um, I don't normally advertise like on we, we could do um, spectrum um, 
and I have people in place. Yeah, I have people in place right now to, to uh, do commercials and so forth. And staging, uh, we would do an event and stage the place. So there's several things that we do in terms of marketing and advertising the place to uh, uh, be successful. Um, you know, bringing in more revenue. Okay, so. It sounds like you've got a good plan. I think you've got an excellent plan and, and it's exactly the kind of business that we want to support and exactly the kind of business that we want to help. So I think you've got a great plan and also we can certainly give your landlord the information that he needs and he'll be able to see when you come up with a sizable down payment, um, he'll be able to see that you, you guys are definitely on the right track. But I have to be careful because right now I've got a touchy question. How is your personal credit? Um, Ernest, you can go first and then April, you can tell me later. Well, I think my average is, is about 640, um, given the fact that I've, I've, I've already acquired a loan. Uh, it's a small loan um, that took my score down. I, I had a 700. But now we're looking at, you know, it rising, but right now, probably that's the average. Okay. Uh, April April's different. So your so mine you're, is um, between six sixty and six ninety. Okay. Um, and it's like the same thing as Ernest. We've been trying to do things to get the funding for this business, um, which is <clears throat> it's great that we met you guys, but it's also one of those things like if we had just met you thirty days ago. <laughs> You know, um, so yeah, so it's good. I have an excellent payback rate. I don't have many things. I mean, I have the basic a car, some credit cards, but I have no delinquencies um, on my credit. I have, yeah, that's about it. When I checked recently experience the other day was, it was at 693, but um, I am just recently learning a lot about credit and how it just, you know, one minute it's up, one minute it's down, no matter what you do. It's like up one point, down five. So uh, I think Trans TransUnion Equifax has me at in the 660s, but ultimately it's at good. When you go from the fair, good, excellent, I'm, um, I'm ranging in the good. Okay. And I have to apologize, you guys. I am multitasking and I'm going to be on, but I have to go off the camera now. But I'm still, I'm here. I don't want you to think that I'm not attentive, but I am. Uh, okay, I just managing. Want, I just want to April, say April, I'm multitasking too, so it's quite all right. Okay. Hey, by the way, Frank, yes. they have already pulled their credit. Um, we've given them the links, they've signed in, and we're waiting for them to send their credit reports over to us. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that, that today. Any time. Okay, yeah. that's that's wonderful, um, and I and I do want to say this one cautionary note: um, you don't need to continue to shop around. A lot of people will tell you, "Oh, go ahead and fill out the application. It isn't going to hurt your credit score, but maybe one or two points." And I'm here to tell you, with 36 plus 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 years of experience, that's a lie. Right. Anytime you fill out an application and they tag your score for maybe two or three points and you don't get the loan, think of it this way. Think of it as a decline. So can you imagine if you pulled up your credit score and you saw a decline, 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 decline on your score because you allowed six people to pull your credit score and they all lied to you and said, oh, it's only going to be one or two points. No big deal. So that would hurt your hurt you when it came time to get the building. That would hurt you when it came time to get more working capital. It would hurt you when it came time to get more leasing capital. So I'm going to say something very, very important. I want to do business with you. You look like the perfect clients for us we can certainly help you. I hope I've impressed you enough with my 36 years experience that you can trust us. What we need you to do is stop shopping around. I heard you say that a couple of times and it got kind of like, Ooh, I don't, don't want to hear that. Well, we hadn't really shopped. We did 
we did one thing and then we were introduced to you. So as I said, it came at perfect timing and we weren't really looking to shop around. This was a blessing opportunity that just came to us. So um, that part we completely understand and I appreciate your transparency of sharing that. But yeah, we we had been stopped shopping. <laughs> it was just that I wish we had to met you before we shopped anything. <laughs> okay, yeah. but well, we're that's here good now. So that's we have, the good part. We have ways to bring the score up to where both scores are going to be over 680. So we'll talk about that up later. But now I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that we can do right now. Um, we have a true lines of credit where we can start off at 620 and you've got to have, you have to have been in business for one year time in business and you have to have around $20,000 worth of monthly revenue proven by bank statements. Now, with regard to the pandemic and your particular business, they will probably allow you to use past bank statements. So, I mean, understanding that, well, you, you, you're in the free country of Florida. So um, I don't, I can't imagine the pandemic hurts you nearly as much as it hurt most people in your industry. But I think that they would probably look at it. Now, if you had previous months, would you be pre-pandemic? Would you say that you would be able to show $20,000 in revenue? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, no big deal, because we have many, many different things. But what we'll need is, I've, Stuart has already told me, you filled out an application, three months worth of bank statements. She's, he said you've already pulled your identity IQ credit report, which is good. And then you have articles of incorporation and an EIN. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, here's what I was talking about on the building itself. Commercial real estate is what that stands for. Um, this is one where we can get people all the way down to 500 FICOs, get them the building. So this may not be the best rates in the world, and they're probably not, but for people that have challenge credit, and I don't, I didn't know what your credit score is going to be like, uh, we can go all the way down to 500. The higher this comes up, the lower this falls down. So just want you to know <clears throat> that when we put you on the program and we start working with you, you're going to see these numbers drop drastically as this number comes up. So when you get up around your 650, 680, 690, consistently your middle FICO, um, not the lowest, not the highest, but the mid FICO is 680 and above, you'll start to see some tremendous deals available for you. And that's it. That's all I had to say. Um, do you have any questions for me? Uh, one question. So my bank account, I've had my LLC for about a year, um, 2020, January 2020. Um, however, I did not open the bank account because that that was when the, the, the a pandemic was, there was some un uncertainty. So I didn't open the account. However, I've been doing business out of my personal account. So it, were, it would reflect a lot of the business uh, deposits um, from, I, I, do, I also do Airbnb and I do Turo plus the events. So it will reflect all of those things. I don't know if that would help or hinder. Right now, the, bank, the business bank account is, is like, we, we opened it just, I think it was about a month ago. Okay. So it doesn't reflect uh, a lot of um, deposits. Okay, no, but your personal bank account will be fine. And, and because you've got the, the uh, business bank account now, it doesn't matter. You do need to have a business bank account. Okay. So now that you have that business bank account, we'll be depositing the money directly into that account, that business bank account. Okay. So, and, and that'll be part of the money. Some of the money that we'll give you might be um, unsecured business credit cards with up to five to ten to twenty thousand dollar lines of credit that do not report on your personal account and then we also have unsecured personal accounts and then we have personal term loans so we 
we have a, a, a regular schmuggers board a buffet of, of funding that you can dip into however you need, just depending on, you know, what your needs are and how things work for you. Uh, okay. We've got a lot of different choices. And if Tracy is, if you're in Tracy's good hands, she's excellent. Uh, she can guide you through to make sure that all of the decisions that you make are going to be positive decisions that are going to help you in the long run. As I mentioned, other guys, they want to get a quick sale and they don't care about you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We don't think of you that way. We think of you as a long-term client, a member of the family that we're going to continue to help when you get the first building that you get and then when you expand from there and start franchising we want to be able to do your franchises too so we want you, we want to be long-term thinking long-term planning for your uh, benefit and the next question would be since the owners uh, are asking for certain things um that, that thing they have well they that's what they're they're implying that they have someone else that's interested we don't believe them but um is there some type of documentation that we could, in good faith, that we can give them to, I guess, show them that we're serious clients? Well, the first screen we talked about was pre-qualification. Okay. So, so yeah, once we, what we want to do is we want to get you pre-qualified right away, okay. like like yesterday. And okay. uh, it only how long does that process take? It only takes twenty-four to forty-eight hours to get you a pre -qual. Okay. And, and then once we once you have the prequel, then you can show him that you qualified for X number of dollars, whatever that is. Um, is April a um, W-2 employee by any chance where she is now? Yes, I am. Okay. And April, how much, what kind of money do you make per year, April? Um, about 45. Okay. So, so we could potentially add to that seventy-five thousand dollars we talked about earlier. We could potentially add another forty-five thousand to that. So we can almost match what you're currently making now in a personal line of credit. So if you put those two things on the table, you can see that <clears throat> you can see that you'll, or your landlord will be able to see that he's definitely got the right tenant. In addition to that, I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to be very careful about my words. We can work with your landlord so that he can lock you into a three-year lease for the building, and we can fund him as if he's already sold the building. I know that's really complicated, um, it, but it, it's not really complicated when, when I break it down. If, if the landlord wanted to get funded now and he wanted to earn the money that he wants to sell that building for, and if you want to lock the price in in case he comes up with, I got somebody else looking at it, say, uh-uh, you can't sell it. I'm right. I got it locked up. You cannot sell it to anyone else. I've got it locked up. If you want to do that, that's one of the things that I've been using. It's one of the tools I've used for 20 plus years is um, using a lease option where the landlord gets more money than he expects to get for the building, but it will make it also very easy for you to qualify. Okay. If you'd like me to talk to the landlord about that, I'll even, I'll even do that for you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, Initially, yeah. that was what our, our first thought was to do it in three years, um, because like Ernest said, he says he has someone else, and the realtor told us that their deal was leased and buy in five years. So we suggested three, and then he came back with the one. You know, assuming you know with the whole sales pitch pressure call, which is why we're not sure if that's really the deal. But we're not trying to rush something to the point where we get into it and it's 
not what it should be or something like that. We want to be able to do it right, which is why our relationship with you is important. Um, if you uh, are doing are able to do what you're saying that you're able to do, then this will definitely help us. Um, and we'd be a lot more comfortable with it. And who's to Obviously, say that if we had wants, more time. Oh, yeah, go ahead. That he won't, uh, it, it, you know, uh, uh, expand to three years. I think maybe he was just strong arming and, and kind of like, you know, well, can you do it in one year? Well, I mean, you know, who's to say that Not he won't? I don't have to. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I, I'm not bragging. Yes, I am. <laughs> but, I, but, but I could put a smile on your landlord's face if, um, a, a, and he'll be very, very happy to give you three years once he gets finished talking to me about the program and it's not going to hurt you. It's going to be just the same as what you're doing right now, but you, you have an option to go the three years or if you feel comfortable a year and one month, you can say, you know what, I want to exercise my option today. And we've guaranteed the price. We know what the price is. There's no negotiation. This is what I'm willing to pay for the building. What it says right here on the piece of paper, you win, he wins, we win. It's a win, win, win. Everyone wins. Now, I'm trusting that you've done the demographics and you know that the building is in a location that is not declining. It is. Do you know that it's not declining, or it may even be uh, growing? Yeah, the, the area uh, is a popular area. We've uh, done our research okay. on uh, demographics and location. Actually, there was a uh, right before the pandemic, there was a, a similar business. Uh, they were doing very well um, with the same clientele that we. Uh, we <laughs> April, you might want to mute, mute your I'm phone. sorry, I yeah. am. So we're pretty confident uh, with the area and the and the facility. Um, the, the, what attracted us to the facility also um, was the fact that it was fully furnished and it's exactly the layout that we uh, want and know that we need to attract the customers that we already have. Um, so those two, two key points are, uh, uh, um, is really what landed me. As, as, uh, uh, I was sold on the building when I, when I stepped in. So. Okay. So one question I didn't, that that's good. I'm glad because now I feel more comfortable that, uh, that if you like the building, if you, if the demographics are going to work for you and you see long-term growth in the area, then that's great. One question I forgot to ask you, is everyone who does events takes their deposits on credit cards. Do you have a way of accepting credit cards? Well, we were introduced, I think, uh, what's, what's the other guy that's on here? Um, oh, Stuart, Stuart, yes. So, yeah, so we, we, so the bank account was established with Wells Fargo. Of course, they're gonna pitch their merchants, but we talked to Stuart and I think that we're probably just gonna go with the merchant that he uh, requested. Um, okay. Well, that's good. That's good because that merchant account, I know Wells Fargo's merchant account is not going to do anything but be a merchant account. And this merchant account that Stuart's talking about can loan you up to $100,000. So as we talked, having OPM to work with, as you start using the merchant account day in and day out, it will grow from Two or three thousand dollar line of credit to five to ten thousand. It could it could grow all the way up to a hundred thousand dollar line of credit above and beyond everything else that we're going to get you. Yeah, we and and the reason why that's good, we do need a buffer because in the restaurant, I've owned two restaurants and things always happen. Always, yeah. Um, yeah, that. so I'm, I'm very familiar with the, uh, the cushion that we we would potentially need. So. This will give you another super cushion that the banks will not give you. So. Right, and we and we uh, one other thing that you know we won't stop doing is advertising. Uh, the advertising dollars um, 
or the, the, the means of advertising would need to be there also to, to keep the, um, will bring in new clients and also to keep the, the uh, customer base that we already have. All right. Well, I'm satisfied. I, uh, I'm looking forward to helping you. And I'm, we want to get you uh, pre-qualified right away quick. So uh, let's go ahead, Tracy, let's take care of that. Let's get them pre-qualified yes. so that they can. So that's women. my question. The pre-qualification, I apologize, Frank. Um, no Tracy, is that just based on the information you sent me that Stuart needs? Is that what we need to do to do the pre-qualification? Right, that's, um, okay. that's it, yes. Okay. At the end of that documentation, I think we forgot to put your articles of organization and your EIN. Make sure those documents come with it. Okay. All right. With that, I'm going to say thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Looking forward to helping you for the long, long term. Thank you, Frank. We appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you both. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you as well. Thank you so much, Tracy. We'll be in touch. I'm going to get that information to you um, as soon as possible. Okay, great. Okay. I'll talk to you soon, April. All right. Thank you. Bye. You guys have a great okay, rest of your have... day. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, you Stuart. Too. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye.